Bat suits come and bat suits go, but Batman is forever. However, part of what makes Batman such an iconic and everlasting character is equipment like his Batmobile, Batarangs, and of course, famous cape and cowl. Join me as we count down the top 10 most powerful bat suits around. Number 10, The Long Halloween. The Batsuit from The Long Halloween has become almost as iconic and well-loved as the story in which it appears. In The Long Halloween, we get to truly see Batman shine as a brilliant detective, which is a huge part of his character and what fans love about him. The Long Halloween suit is fairly powerful as it comes with Batman's iconic yellow utility belt, but the overall color scheme for it is a touch darker than usual, making it even more appropriate for stealthing around in the dark. Something that you likely want a Batsuit to be really well designed designed for considering how much it's a part of Batman's general strategy for disarming and taking down criminals. Starting off light, I give the Long Halloween one pouch out of five for my personal Beltometer ranking, which I'm gonna do throughout this list just because I think it's funny and I want to. Number nine, Earth One. On Earth One, a Batman suit can plug into a state-of-the-art advanced computer system that he keeps in his Batcave. This system allows him to run criminal checks and also process criminal analysis. Within his utility belt, he also has a plethora of tools and devices to be used in the field. The Earth One suit provides Batman with all the items that he needs to unleash the full potential of his investigative skills and helps to enhance Batman's already impressive fighting prowess. It's a standard suit, but one that gets the job done and works well. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. I give the Earth One suit two out of five utility belt pouches. And friends, before we move on to this next spot, if you are loving this list and you want more lists like it where we talk about all the various bat suits, goodness knows there have been many different looks and many different power levels of suit, be sure to let us know by giving this video a thumbs up. Number eight, Exoframe. The Dark Knight Returns bat suit, known sometimes as the Exoframe bat suit or the Powered bat suit from Frank Miller's story featuring an old Batman facing off against an old but less aged Superman is a tank of a suit. I mean, it has to be because it has to help compensate for Batman's more advanced age and it also has to make up for the power imbalance between Bruce and Clark so that he doesn't just get smooshed straight out of the game but can actually hold his own against the powerhouse that is Superman. This is a much more armor-based and durable suit. It also comes fully weaponized with some tricks that Batman can utilize to help him in his fight against Superman. Ultimately, the suit isn't enough to let him win the battle, unless, of course, his whole plan was to just put up a good show and feign defeat in the end, which, based on the ending of this story, seems extremely likely. I give the Dark Knight Returns Batsuit two pouches out of five. Number seven, plated. The plated bat suit comes from Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy and is the new suit that Bruce has made after the Nomex suit leaves him wanting more flexibility. Batman can't turn his head in this suit, which of course means he has to rely on peripherals in combat and he jokes, makes it hard for him to back out of the driveway. Lucius Fox in response to Bruce's complaints on the Nomex suit helps him by designing the plated suit. This suit is composed of more separate pieces, which give Batman added flexibility Ability, agility, and speed. It's made up of hardened Kevlar plates on a titanium dipped fiber with his cowl's new design being based on that of a motorcycle helmet, granting him increased flexibility in his neck so he can actually, you know, turn his head. Batman also gives the suit sonar vision, which would use cell phones to help Batman see and even pitch darkness by tapping into said cell phones and using them as microphones to broadcast a high frequency, which the suit can then use to see just about anywhere in Gotham. He can also use the sonar vision to tap into people's cell phones so we can also use them to listen in on just what's going on in Gotham and what people are saying, which is pretty creepy. However, Lucius was not a fan of the sonar vision because he felt it was unethical, equating it to spying on millions of people whenever it was being used. So while this was cool tech, it was never really fully utilized because Lucius disagreed with his design for sonar vision being used in this manner to spy on people. And he was the only one that Bruce trusted to ethically use it. In fact, Lucius's reaction was to agree to help Batman, but only once as he felt compelled to resign because of how this tech was going to be used. Granted, the tech had a self-destruct built in by Bruce, who knew Lucius probably wouldn't agree to using that tech all the time, and it was destroyed after the one-time use, implying that Fox stayed on and, of course, did not end up resigning. The plated suit also didn't provide as much protection and ended up getting Bruce injured to the point that he would need a cane. Still, a solid three out of five pouches, but I feel like speed should not be as important as the actual armor of the suit, in my mind. If Batman was like, yeah, I just want to move my neck, I'd be like, dude, I just want 
showing you to keep your neck, you know what I mean? Number six, Mark I. The Mark I bad suit comes to us from Batman the Telltale series, an episodic based playable novel style video game where your choices as Batman influence the world and the story around you. Meaning that you get to see what it feels like to literally be Batman. There are a few different versions of the bat suit that we get throughout the evolution of the story and the game. The first suit you get to play with is, of course, the Mark I, which was primarily designed by Lucius Fox. The suits in the Telltale games really should not be underestimated, by the way. The Mark I comes armored, of course, protecting you as Batman against gunfire and even armor-piercing bullets. Aside from that, you also get more heavily armored gauntlets to defend against incoming attacks on your exposed jawline. The suit also comes with tech that allows you to pilot and control drones, so you can plan combat strategies and get surveillance before jumping into a fight. It also comes with a voice modulator, hacking equipment, visual holographic, and criminal and forensic analysis capabilities, thermal imaging, night vision, and sticky bombs. This suit gets a three out of five pouches rating from me. And that's just the first model from the game, so yeah, it also gets better from there. But I like the Mark I, so I wanted to talk about that one. Number five, Nomex. Even though the Nomex suit was actually designed before the plated Batsuit armor in Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy, I still actually think that this one is better and a more powerful suit overall. It offered Bruce a lot more protection when in battle. It made him almost bullet and knife proof with its Kevlar biweave. This armor was actually based on a rejected military design that while impressive, was considered too costly by the US military for them to use, or any other military. That's how expensive it was. Obviously not an issue for Bruce Wayne though. The suit was created by Lucius Fox and would later be modified by Bruce and Alfred. For the purpose of this list, we're focusing on that modified version, which has a few key improvements that allow Batman to easily eavesdrop on conversations in the vicinity, but out of earshot, an improved helmet, as the original one was defective, and a latex coating, which helps to mask Batman's heat signature. The major downside with this suit is that flexibility is reduced somewhat, making Batman a bit slower in battle and preventing him from turning his head. Still, I give the Nomex suit four out of five pouches. Number four, Prime. Obviously, one of the best suits around has to still be the Earth Prime suit. It is one of the most modern, and because it isn't restricted to the cinematic realism we often apply to films to make sure characters aren't too powerful and to also make sure things are logical for people that are watching, it can be a little bit more OP. The suit is also made of Kevlar with some titanium also thrown in the mix. It's bulletproof and also helps to protect Batman from high impact damage and blunt force trauma. So if he falls out of a window from a low rise building, he'll likely be able to still get up and even possibly recover and continue the fight. It's also flame retardant. His mask also has a thin lead lining to protect him from x-ray powers and abilities and includes sonar capabilities, enhanced auditory sensors, infrared and night vision. Like the plated suit from the Dark Knight trilogy, his mask also comes equipped with defensive measures like an electrical shock or gas emissions, which help to protect Batman's secret identity should someone try to unmask him. In his utility belt, he also carries a slew of tools that we've seen him utilize over the years in battle, including a kryptonite ring gifted to him by Superman himself, just in case it should ever be needed. I give the Prime suit four out of five utility belt pouches. Lots of cool stuff in that utility belt. Number three, Project Batman Exosuit. The Project Batman Exosuit was created for Jim Gordon when he filled in as Batman after the events of Endgame. Not only was Jim Gordon trained up and enhanced himself in order to become the newly appointed Batman, but he was also given this nifty suit to use as well. The suit had two layers, a very svelte undersuit, which was sleek and trim that Gordon wore, and the mechanical exosuit, which was like a small mech. This suit came equipped with live rounds, rocket launchers, and all the bells and whistles when it came to tech. It came with the neural guidance system, emergency response equipment, including a defibrillator, fire and heat sonics, cannons, a retractable thermoresist blackout visor, rocket boosters, and camouflage capabilities. It was pretty nuts. Oh, it could also just do its own thing and you didn't even have to pilot. It could be like on autopilot and also be like helping Jim Gordon while he was Batman outside of the suit as well, which is nuts. For the Project Batman suit, I gotta give it a solid four out of five pouches, cause it is crazy. I mean, imagine if Batman wore that suit, that would be nuts. Like Bruce Wayne Batman, not Jim Gordon Batman, who was good, but you know, he's not Bruce Wayne. Number two, Hellbat. 
Hellbat is an amazing suit of basically nanotech armor. It was created for Batman by the Justice League to help him increase his stats for battles in which he was completely outclassed. The suit is extremely durable, tough and strong, and can be summoned or dismissed at will via AI tech. The suit has cloaking capabilities, can give Batman literal wings to fly on, and can produce a powerful energy blast from its bat insignia. The downside with this suit is that it's not indestructible, and powerful enemies like Darkseid have damaged it before. It also drains Batman's metabolism when he uses it to increase his own physical abilities such as strength, toughness, or speed, so he needs to be careful as overuse of this element of the suit could actually end up resulting in his death. Still, Batman doesn't even need the Justice League to reassemble this suit after it's first made, and not only does it look cool, but it is very, very OP. I give this suit five out of five utility belt pouches. Maybe even six, actually. It's pretty crazy. I don't know if there's a six on this list, but these last few, they're definitely pushing it. Number one, Insider. The Insider was a super cool spy suit that Batman used after he returned from being MIA, but was believed dead following a battle with Darkseid, which didn't actually leave him dead, but did leave him having weird, time travel adventures. It was a long story. Returning home, he decided to check in with the Bat family and see how they were doing in his absence with the care of Gotham before revealing himself, because Batman. He created a suit to help disguise himself, which had various different modes that allowed him to basically mimic the powers of various members of the Justice League to help keep his identity secret. Although he also included Batman himself in those modes, because Batman is also a member of the Justice League. And it'd be weird if he didn't. If he didn't, I feel like people might be like, maybe it's Batman pretending to be everybody else. This allowed him to maintain an air of mystery, while also giving him a really powerful and cool power set with his suit. Oh yeah, and he could also fly and teleport in this suit, because why not? Couldn't teleport super far, but he could still teleport. I give this suit 5 out of 5 pouches, and some bonus Batarang style points, because it's super cool. Throw those Batarangs around. What are some of your favorite suits that Batman has donned? Which do you think is the most powerful? Do you have any design ideas that you'd love to see implemented in the comics? DC AU or DCEU? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. This has been Top 10 Nerd, and I am your host, Amanda McKnight. Till next time, you stay nerdy, YouTube.